e ma le ni be yen o ni le loko e siku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's adironke again i hope your day is going well today i'd like to discuss pronouns oru aropo oruko oru aropo oruko the words that replace the name the pronouns in hopes that by the end of this video you'll be able to confidently construct sentences even if they are short ones you know that involve pronouns in some way there are some things that you should know or be reminded of the first is yoruba language pronouns do not differentiate between or among genders so there's no him or her or his or hers or she or he or we don't have any of that you could be referring to your husband and you could be discussing your phone and you would be using the same pronouns for for each we don't differentiate at some point when our culture was being explored by certain europeans they thought it was um laughable <laughs> according to some accounts they thought it was laughable that we did not have her and him and we the our language has not developed so much so that we would be able to differentiate among the sexes <laughs> and now it's funny because i find that people are having to put her and him and his and they in their bios <laughs> now it's a problem that they are trying to solve and it's him her she they <laughs> people having to specify the pronouns that they would like to go with i've seen it in signatures seen it on instagram profiles you know but it's a problem that shouldn't have existed at all so at the end of the day the so-called developed language anyway that aside age or hierarchy differentiation is what is present in some regions or dialects not all so we instead have honorifics you know it might be age it might be hierarchy it might be i have a video in which i have discussed these things in detail where and how maybe not necessarily and how maybe this is the video that i'm going to address the and how but where honorifics apply because it's not always dependent on age sometimes a person can be younger than you and you will still address them with honorific pronouns I give so many instances. If you marry into a family, although your in-laws are younger than you, you're typically supposed to not call them by their first names and give them certain honorific. I've addressed it all in that video. So, again, some subgroups, let me say, use honorifics, but some don't at all. Some don't at all. And in that same video, I think I mentioned that uh, due to Ajayi Crowther's influence on what is considered standard Yoruba, in speaking, writing, and approach, that is, the Oyo dialect is promoted more when it comes to recording Yoruba, you know, when it comes to writing and speaking, and approach is regarded as the common Yoruba. The uniqueness of many diverse groups is underexplored in learning. So in that video, I gave the instance of the Uyiyowo and Undo, you know, um, and I mentioned that these groups don't have any honorific pronouns. So apart from the fact that none of us differentiate among the genders, these people, the Undo, they, they don't even differentiate among the, among hierarchy. You know, it's the same pronoun for everybody. You could be a king, you could be a... It doesn't matter who you are, you could be an inla. It's the same pronoun across. So they take balance to another level, <laughs> you know. So it's, it's a video that I really recommend you to watch. In that video, I think I mentioned the day five, but I don't think I mentioned the dead. Sometimes they will ask, is it honorifics that i should be addressing this late person with or non-honorifics and in that video i said it's 
really about preference. I believe I mentioned that for the deifa, that it's really about preference. You know, it really depends on the person. When a person is late, it doesn't really matter to them anymore. You know, it doesn't even matter in general anymore. It's really up to you. You know, today, more specifically, I'll be covering personal pronouns and um, I've divided them into strong and delicate personal pronouns specifically today and I've divided them into strong and delicate for the ones that I would regard as strong by strong I mean they make sense in an outsider sentence that is they can be said alone in response to a question just that pronoun can can answer a question and they're also emphatic and can often be used in response to questions that start with who and which. You know, they're emphatic by nature. There's a way that you can use them in the construction of a sentence that can make that sentence quite emphatic. And apart from the strong, we have the delicate. By delicate, what I mean is they don't make sense outside the sentence. You can't use them alone in, in response to a question. And they are not emphatic in and of themselves. So in and of themselves, they don't carry that emphasis. There's the subject and object. The subject of a statement is the one who performs the action. In that sentence, the one who is performing the action is the subject. The object is the one who is receiving the action, the recipient of the action. So it's just something to bear in mind. Another thing is that honorific pronouns are the exact same as plural pronouns. So if you're addressing one person honorifically, perhaps because they're older than you, or perhaps because they are younger than you, but they're king, or perhaps because they're younger than you and they're your fiance, younger sister, you would use honorific pronouns for them. And they are the same as if you're referring to two people. Or more irrespective of their ages or social positions or hierarchy one person that is a king maybe the way that you address them the pronouns that you use for them is the same that you would use for two or more like regular people irrespective of their ages or positions also <laughs> another thing is that there are no present past or future forms of verbs so it really depends on whatever words that you had to the statement. If you had mm, mm, mo, mm, lo, I am going, that mm, uh, is what indicates that the sentence is in a present tense or a continuous tense. It's something that is happening, I am going, or it's something that happens, I go, you know, something like that. But in and of themselves, the verbs don't change. Moti lo. Moti lo is I have gone or I had gone. Moti lo. By adding T there, you determine the. We don't have eat, et, eating, eaten, eaten it. <laughs> we don't have all of that. It's just the verbs remain themselves. They don't change. The words that you had to the statement would determine the tense. But by default, without adding anything else, they are in past tense. So delicate pronouns, just one more pointer regarding delicate pronouns, can be fluid in the object form. And you'll see that soon. The ones that I've regarded as the delicate pronouns, the ones that I've regarded as the strong pronouns, don't have subjects and object forms. They are, they remain themselves. But the ones that I've regarded as the delicate pronouns, the ones that don't make sense outside the sentence or alone, can be fluid in the object form and are determined by the last vowel of the preceding verb. And it would make sense soon, but just something to note. The delicate pronouns can be fluid in the object form and are determined by the last vowel of the preceding verb. And this formula... <sighs> I really encourage you to learn do me re mi mi re if you can learn these you should be well on your way to making sense of it all do me as far as sentence construction is concerned 
do mi re mi mi re do mi re mi mi re do mi re mi mi re the yoruba language is such an interesting language to theorize <laughs> and it it did take me a while i remember when i taught this february last year and if you took that class i encourage you to watch this video some things have changed my thoughts have changed since then there are one or two differences you know in the way that i've thought thought this that was not quite the same as what i did last year do me re mi mi re and i came up with this formula so to say that might help you remember it ani moji ri re ani moji ri re. the statement ani is i insist mo is i g is to wake up or woke up ri is to see ire is goodness so you could say i insist i woke up to see goodness or you could just say i insist i woke up to goodness ani mojiri re ani mojiri re if you can master that if you can learn that then you would always remember do mi re mi mi re each syllable of this it's actually a sentence that i've shrunk into a word each syllable of this has the tone in the right order so do me do me re mi re mi mi re ri re ani moji ri re if you remember ani moji ri re then you would remember do me re mi mi re if you can learn this then you should be should be good this is the video that i was referring to that political social religious positions can influence um, honorifics typically we just say it's the age if somebody is older than you you use honorific pronouns for them if they are younger you use non honorifics but that's not really how it works somebody that is younger than you that doesn't have any claim to any it doesn't matter if they're king there are certain factors anyway that would determine the use of honorifics and it's so broad and it's i try to be as detailed as possible so i feel like i've covered all the instances where honorifics would apply or not apply but yeah i strongly recommend this one because i'm going to be mentioning honorifics non-honorifics and if you're confused about okay who exactly am i supposed to be using honorifics for this is where to come there's also the domi dynamic, the domi compatibility theory. And uh, it's really another one that you should check out. Sometimes when, sometimes tones change too. When me comes after do in a statement, this is a syllable that has the me tone and it comes after one that has the do tone. This is do. This is me. I won't say do me. That would be a k. I would say do me. A k. This is still me. You will still put the me tone mark on it, but you pronounce it like me rather than me. When me comes after do, when me comes after do, it sounds like me. And on the other other hand, when do comes after me. It sounds like I don't have that on this slide. When do comes after me, it sounds like do, do, do. And there's one exception for when that would not be. So, ah, <laughs> you don't know how strongly I recommend this video. It's especially if you are trying to get to the point where you want to pronounce fluently. You don't want to say do me, eke. You want to say do me, eke. That's what makes you sound like you're actually Yoruba and you're familiar with the language. Once you know the tones and you're able to recognize them in words and sentences and pronounce them accordingly, putting the Domi compatibility theory in mind, I you should be well on your way to speaking Yoruba like somebody who doesn't even know any other country exists apart from Nigeria or the Southwest part of it. 
So something to keep in mind. Now that we've considered everything that needed to be considered first, I'm going to start with hi, you, he, she, it in their subject and object forms. Whenever you see this, LV or PV, what I mean is last vowel of preceding verb. So <laughs> really important because you're going to be seeing it until the end of this video probably. LV or PV is last vowel of preceding verb and ani moji re re do me re mi mi re you see that they're important the first is hi which in its strong form is a me what do i mean by strong i've addressed it if somebody says talomu iwemi who took my book you can just respond by saying a me you can say a minimumu iwe. You can say that it can be emphatic. You know, you can say it with emphasis. It's it's also emphatic in and of itself. Anyway, a minimumu iwe. I am the one that took your book. You know, sort of what it would translate if you're going to trans translate as if you're going to translate it to English. So it works outside the center. It works alone, and it's emphatic. But with the one that I've referred to as dedicate, if somebody says, Talomu eroe bani sorue, who took your phone? You can't say mo in response. You have to actually use that in a sentence. That's why it's delicate. So mo is the subject form. The strong emphatic ones are typically used alone. Like if you actually use an emphatic pronoun in a statement there's a chance that you want to add some form of emphasis you know but typically under normal circumstances not that this is an abnormal circumstance people typically use um the delicate ones for sentence construction in the subject and object forms this one doesn't have subject and object mo mo is i in the object form, if the last vowel of the preceding verb is do, then this would be me. If the last vowel of the preceding verb is re, then this would be me. If the last vowel of the preceding verb is me, then this would be re, do me, re, me, me, re, remember. <laughs> Last vowel of the preceding verb is do. Then you know that do me. This would have to carry the me, me tone. Me. And the reason I, I keep saying do me is because of, you know, the um, do me compatibility theory. When me comes after do, it sounds like me. When uh, do comes after me, it sounds like do. You know, you, have, you should watch that video. Last vowel of the preceding verb is do. Then this is me. Last vowel of the preceding verb is re, then this is me. Last vowel of the preceding verb is me, then this is re, do me, re, me, me, re, ani, moji, re, re. So, something to keep in mind. Now, let's do example sentences so that we can make sense of it. For this one, I did not really include a lot of, well, any strong pronouns because they are pretty straightforward, right? I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the delicate ones because like I said they're the ones that are typically used in full sentences especially when you don't mean to add any extra emphasis to what you're saying or something mori ife mo is I in the subject form per the previous slide mori ife would be re is C I told you our verbs don't change depending on the tense it is what whatever you had that would determine the tense whether it's going to be in a present or continuous tense or a is it past participle is called but just regular it, it's typically in the past tense form you know many many times mori ife i saw ife mori this is i mo in the subject form this is Ife saw me and Iferi me Iferi me is what you would say 
if the last vowel of the preceding verb this is why you also need to be able to identify verbs i'm going to start a series on patron where i would cover verbs like on a daily basis so that you can be as familiar with as many verbs as possible so i'm going to start that probably in may you know so for my patrons be on the lookout for that if you want to join my patron feel free if every me if i saw me also i'll be uploading verbs here as well and using them in sentences so you know <laughs> I'm, i'm not going to deny non-patrons my access to my teaching you know in some way or another if every me if i saw me this is me the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with me that is why the, that is why this is re do me me re me re see me re per the do me re me me re theory animo jiri re you know if every me do me me re if i saw me re me it's me here me re see this these are other examples where the preceding verb carries a different tone from me in this one the preceding verb has only one syllable and the last vowel that is end, ends with is in the in the uh, re tone so this would be me re me re me adetai or resembles me adetai or jomi adetai or jomi the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with a re tone so this would be me re me re me this has the re this is the official symbol for the re tone but of course we don't put it on our vowels anymore and for one that has the do tone akonji called me if i want to say that akonji pe mi akonji pe mi we it ends with do the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the do tone so this would be me for the ajimori re theory do mi re mi mi re theory animoji re re theory akonji pe mi pe do mi See, do me, do me, pe me, a conji pe me, a conji pe me, a conji pe me, pe is how you would say, but the, the reason why I'm saying pe here is because of the do me compatibility theory. Me do, I told you, when do comes after me, it doesn't sound like do, it sounds like do. So, this is why it sounds like pe when i actually say this thing rather than akonji pe mi do do mi see i'm saying mi here do do rather than mi rather than akonji i'm saying do do mi akonji because of that what i've explained in that video pe do is what it is by default but it sounds like do when you actually say the statement akonji pe and then mi pe mi do me do do me do me a conji pe me you you should see that video i can't stress that, that enough a conji pe me again <laughs> i can't even believe i put it here again like uh, this video <laughs> you have to see it to make sense of why sometimes me sounds different sounds like me and sometimes do sounds different sounds like do that video explains it quite well the next one is you in the singular form of course so if you are referring to one person that is why this is singular the you if it's in a non honorific context that is the person you are addressing is not older than you they are not in any kind of position they've not done anything for you they are not your in-law they don't have any political or religious position all the factors that i've mentioned for why a person would use honorifics you know if it's a non honorific iwo or ire would be the str the strong form 
in the non honorific context, Iwo or Ire. So, Palo Sobe, who said that? You can reply if you want to say you. <laughs> you don't even want to say you did. You just want to say you. You know, it's emphatic in and of itself. It works outside the sentence. In and of it, it works by itself. You can just say Iwo or Ire. That is you. Iwo is Oyo. I think probably some parts of Oyo use Ire too. You know, but both work. I feel like while this is more common, this is also very common. Iwo, Ire. Just say Iwo or Ire. You said it. <laughs> non honorific. Iwo, Ire. However, in the honorific context, if you're replying to somebody, and they fit one of the criteria for honorifics. You could say any, 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 iwo, ire for the non honorific, any for the honorific. And in the uh, delicate form, we also have the honorific and non honorific. If it's in the subject form that is you're starting a statement with it or you're using it as okay this is the person performing the action or is what it would be in the non-honorific subject form in some dialects they use or or today or today or today they use that but i just put it in brackets because i remembered um don't worry about it as long as you know this one which at the end of the day is more common you know because it's oyo it's the common yoruba o works in the non honorific object form if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the do tone it would be e or o if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the re tone it would be E or O as well. Do me, re me. See, that's why they carry the me tone. If the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the re tone, it would be me, E or O as well. And if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the me tone, it would be E or O. E or O for do. E or O for re, E or or for me either of the two works this is more common i think but this is also very common so i couldn't leave one out for the other that's it for the non-honorifics for the honorific you are addressing one person but they fit the honorific criteria then you would say a eh, in the subject form and you would say ni in the honorific um object form object it but this has something to it remember do me re me mi re this already has me do me well it has the me tone anyway also you need to see my video on tone marks to make sense of this part i feel like every video on this uh series has to be watched like in order to actually make sense of everything of anything me has the me tone me do me right re me it has the me tone as well but me re me re this doesn't change you had something to the verb instead so it's the verb that changes the the verb remains itself but you extend it so to say I'll explain it when we get there. If the preceding verb ends with a me tone, the verb changes. Let's start with the, let's leave the strong. I told you that the any, iwo, ire are the strong forms and I won't be emphasizing on the strong forms. They are pretty straightforward, in fact, but I'll, I'll address them still. But if we're looking at the delicate in the subject and object forms, since we use them more commonly in sentences, we should start with this in the subject form or in the object it could be any of these let's see 
o fun mi is how you would say you gave me o remember from the previous slide some would say o fun mi o in some dialects um and it's just i really don't like how many dialects are all explored and learned i think i mentioned it in the video on, on honorifics as well pretty underexplored it's just or yo or yo that comes up i think even many people don't pay any attention to learning their own dialects they just feel like it's too difficult or it's too you know so i don't like that it's not it's the yoruba language yes and we have the the lingua franca so to say the more common version that almost everybody can speak that was popularized because it was you know documented in the bible documented in the dictionary used in several disc uh discourses or discussions especially from the 1800s until now but there are other dialects too just something to keep in mind we have diverse dialects or oh, for me you gave me or oh, for me you gave me or oh, for me or oh, you however in the object form if you want to say I gave you, mofon e or mofon is what you say. If you say mofon, it works. If you say mofon, it also works. Why does this carry this tone? Because the last vowel of the preceding verb, which is fun, fun, that on there is the last vowel. Fawel ya ron mope. Un, un, e, i, un, un. This. It, ha it carries the mi tell mo fun e or mo fun or fun me me i gave you me re me re so mo fun e mo fun or me fun me re fun or me re fun e me re see do me re me me re if you can learn that by heart i ni mo ji re re i insist i woke up to goodness should be okay Mofue, mofue, I gave you. Oguntola yoe. Oguntola yo. Oguntola removed you. Oguntola yo. Yo is to remove. Re mi. Re mi yoe. Yo. Re mi. Re mi. This, they carry the mi tone because of the. Do mi re mi mi re theory. Animojiri re theory is what I like to call it. Oguntola yoe. Oguntola yo. Yo. Yoe. Re mi. Oguntola removed you. Another one is babashe or babashe o. Father offended you. Father offended you. Babashe. This is do. She. Again, do mi baba. She do me do rather than do me do ba ba she that's not how we speak we put the do me re me uh, do me compatibility theory in mind do me ba ba she do see do coming after me so it sounds like do me coming after do so so it sounds like me do me do me baba she eh do me do me so this is eh or o but it may sound different because of the do me re mi mi re do me compatibility theory do me do me baba she eh baba she o you know she eh she o baba she eh baba she o do me see now let's do the the honorific <laughs> the delicate honorific and you know i've said it <laughs> quite emphatically that you need to watch the video to make sense of when and when not to use honorifics the do me re mi mi re compatibility theory also applies and I explained it briefly earlier, but I'm going to do the same again. Because of the, see, me told you, 
this carries the me tone anyway. So if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with do, it would remain itself. If the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with re, it will remain itself. But if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with me, then something would have to happen in which re would have to be introduced somehow. And it would have to be introduced to not the pronoun, not this, but the verb. It's the verb that changes, not this. If the preceding verb ends with a me tone, the verb changes. So this remains as it is. Remember I mentioned earlier that the verbs typically don't change with tenses. So past tense, present tense, present continuous, eat, eaten, eating, eaten it, eats. At, you know, we don't have that, but sometimes some inclusions, some extensions occur with our verbs, and they are not really tense related. They are not at all tense related. So sometimes they would adjust or accommodate some other accommodate the extension of themselves, the verbs I mean, but they don't change per the tense. Okay, let's do the honorific you. Efumi. Efumi. You gave me. Efumi. You. E. Right? Uh, subject form of you, singular. Honorific. <laughs> More specifically, Efumi. You gave me. Efumi. You gave me. Fu is the verb to give. It could be gave, it could be whatever tense you want it to carry, or whatever tense applies in the statement. Mofuni, this has the me tone, and something is being added here. Rather than saying mofuni, me, me, re is being added here somehow. Mire, mire, this has to adjust to become mire. Fum, ni, I gave you. It will make sense soon. How does the, how does the verb change? A dash is first applied. In that case, in the case that the preceding verb that comes before ni ends with the me tone and you can't go me, me because it wouldn't align with that theory, with that, uh, with the animojiri rate theory of formula. <laughs> you have to introduce the re somehow before you get to the ni. You have to introduce the re somehow. And that would be the kind of div. So it wouldn't just be me, 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 me. It would be me, re, me. You know, show you. Me, it would be me, re. And then you can then go to ni. A dash is first applied. And the last vowel of the preceding verb with the me tone is duplicated in the re tone so the verb you put a dash you duplicate the last vowel in the re tone and then you can go ni see give you an example so again back to the same example actually efumi you gave me mofuni fu is the verb here ni because of do mi re mi mi re i don't want to go mi mi because it has to be mi re so i would put a dash here and i would duplicate the last vowel of this verb this is why you have to be familiar with aromukwe and daromukwe vowel this is an aromukwe vowel un, un, e, i, un, un. Un. Fun. so a dash and then i would duplicate this in the re tone so it will become mi re and then I can I can proceed to say ni per usual. Mofun mire. Then you can go ni. Mofun ni. I gave you. Again, see this video. In this video, I've addressed it. You know, um, the aromukwe vowels. It's really critical that you that you learn it. Just so that you're not always confused. Oh, this, the last vowel of the preceding verb, would I just be duplicating the U there? No, it's, these are the Aramukwe vowels. So, 
other instances so that you can get more clarification in this what exact this example sentences specifically have verbs that end in the do tone so you see that no adjustments are necessary do mi re mi mi re mugbanyi mugbanyi see this has the do tone mugbanyi i saved you is what that is Guys, to save, to receive, to collect, to retrieve has extended meanings. But for saved, save. Mugbanyi, domi. Ni is remaining itself because it's domi anyway. Like I said, mugbanyi. If you want to say ifa knows you, ifa moni, it's remaining itself. Ifa moni, domi, domi. Do me, so it works. No, no ch changes needed. No adjustments needed for the verbs. In this ones, the preceding verbs ends with a re tone. Mobini, mobini. I asked you. Mobini, I asked you. Ask you. Mobini, Remi. See, Remi, Remi. Mobini, I asked you, or mm, I've added mm, here, and this is what makes it rather than saying something affected you. Mm, I added mm, here, mm, shayi, mm, shayi, mm. something is something is affecting you. The verbs don't change for the tenses. Remi, shayi, Remi, see, Remi, Remi. But in the instance that the preceding verb ends with a me tone, me tone, you have to again consider the do mi re mi mi re. So a dash is first applied. This is the verb. A dash is first applied, and you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb in the re tone. Mofuni, I gave you. Mofuni. Rather than saying mo I fu gave ni you mo fu ni no say mo fu ni a dash is first applied and you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb in the re tone I gave you this is another example that involves the verb be which is birth you have to be able to recognize tones in words very critical you can't really learn yoruba without learning the tones you can't escape it <laughs> me be me be rather than saying abini we birth you you know a dash is first applied and the last vowel of the preceding verb which is in the me tone is duplicated in the re tone abini we birth you. Abini, we birth you. This is another example and it involves the word donwo. I thought it would be a great time to introduce verbs like this to you. Some verbs one can only get or we only got by combining two verbs. So some verbs are a combination of two verbs. One would not be sufficient to cover the whole thing. The second would also not be con sufficient alone. So you combine them and then you're able to properly express the verb you're going for. So don't wo. Don't is like to try. Wo is to look at. Don't. It's typically not used alone. It's one of the like millennium's old verbs. You typically don't. Well, maybe in some dialects, but it's typically not used alone like that, but it's try. Wo is to look at. Don wo is to try something and then look at it. So to examine, to assess, to test. With verbs like this, whenever a pronoun is to come after them, you know, a pronoun is involved in this statement, especially a pronoun in the object form, a delicate pronoun, the object form, you would uh, split them. So it would be the first part, the pronoun, and then the last part. 
so just just one thing to keep in mind are they tested you is what i want to say or as they assessed you are they done you woo? see the rather than saying are they done woo ni or something like that you split the verb so you start by splitting it you know that the pronoun is going to be in between so it's there but rather than saying are they done you wo rather than saying that are they done you wo? you would say you would add a dash a dash is first applied and then you would duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb of the verb the preceding verb before ni you will duplicate that in the re tone mi re don un, and then you can go ni and then you can the second half of the of the word then you had wo so you split them you know that the pronoun is always going to be in between but with in this instance where one part the first part hands with the me tone you know you have no choice you have you can't say a day don't ye wo. you can't just put the pronoun me me they're beside each other like that so you put a dash you duplicate this in the rate tone and then it becomes done so you say a day don't ye wo. I did done you. I did tested you. Another example. Mu. Take. Choose. Catch. Mu. Mu. Take. Choose. Catch. If you want to say I caught you. Mu mu ni. Mu mu ni is what you would say. Mu mu ni. I caught you. Rather than saying mu mu ni. And this is the honorific. Case now, rather than saying momuni, it puts a dash here. You duplicate the last vowel in the re tone, mi re, mu, and then you go ni, momuni, I caught you, momuni, I caught you. One is has quite extensive meanings. It could be a verb. It could be an adjective. In, in the adjectival sense, it could be expensive or costly, could be rare. In the verbal sense, it could be to be scarce for some for somebody. When something is scarce for somebody or something, that thing doesn't have it. So here, it's, in this case, it's a verb, which was actually the original way that the word came to be before it then got its adjectival um meanings money is cause for you rather than saying oh money you put a dash here you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb this is an aromokwe vowel uh. so me re oh money oh money oh money money is cause for you Owoni, duplicate the last vowel. You had a dash. You du duplicate it in the rate tone. Owo, rather than saying owo mo, and then ni dash because this is me me and they can't be right right beside each other. It has to be me re before you can then go to the me. You say owo woni, bo, mo bo ni, they fed you. Mo bo ni. Bot is to feed and nurture. Dash, duplicate it in the red tone. Bo, and then ni. One bo ni, they fed you. So you would have to practice and review it to really grasp it, but it's just that straightforward. The next one, so that we don't waste any time, is the e, she, or it. In the strong non honorific form, it is um. Um, talo je resimi. He did it, or just he, he, um. In the honorific form, awo, awo, um. Strong non honorific, awo. Strong honorific. In the delicate uh, forms, in the non honorific first, o. Non honorific. O. 
or is how you start the sentence you know the subject form in the non honorific object i put verb vowel based here it's really based on the domi re mi mi re theory so it's going to make sense soon but it's verb vowel based anyway verb vowel based for the non honorific for the honorific one is how you start the sentence that is in the honorific this is the subject form of e she or it one however in the object form for the honorific if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the do tone it's one if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the re re tone it's one however if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the me tone then it, this it is one re one do me re mi mi re let's take it step by step and start with the you know delicate or non-emphatic subject and object o is how you start the sentence is how you say she e or it when they are performing the subject roles like this in the object forms her he it you would extend the verb you would extend the it's not quite like but if you seen the kind of extension that i made earlier for the ni context should make sense it's verb vowel based so the verb is extended in the non honorific form i'll show you how is it extended a dash is applied and the last vowel of the preceding verb is repeated in the tone that applies do mire mi mire ani mujiri to state her him or it so there are no designated words for her him it it is the verb that would birth the her him it that would birth her him it in the object forms they're in the object forms it's the verb that will birth them I'll show you verb vowel based in the subject form o right is uh, what i mentioned as e she it in the subject form o ba o wo o ba o wo e she or it received money e she or it received money but then how do you say is she or it received it if you don't want to say you you don't really want to specify that it's money probably because of the environment that you're in or for your own privacy you don't want to be as explicit as possible you want to say she received it the person you're talking to already knows this is what you would do ogbawo ogba is how you would say it in that case what you would do is og well first of all <laughs> ba is the verb you have to know what the verb is in and of itself sometimes verb tones change when it now verbs that have the do tone let me just I really wasn't hoping to teach it yet that was supposed to be the next video the one after verbs that have the do tone when a noun comes after them when they come come before a noun they just the ones that have the do tone i believe they change they become re rather than o ba o wo you say mi re re mi they change and irrespective of whatever ogba if it this were to be dodo you know ogba dodo it, it would still be mi re dodo if it were to be shibi ogba shibi it would still be verbs that end with the do tone become re when they come before a noun that's not supposed to be a video for yet <laughs> don't want to confuse you just forget about that no he, listen to that and forget about that that would be for a different video but that's why this has changed from ba to
to ba o ba owo ba owo it's not a way of i don't know just to let me make that video <laughs> I feel like it's going to be so conflicting if I start teaching that now, especially since I don't I didn't prepare the slides that would make that as clear as possible. But that's why this changed. Ba is the verb anyway. Oba, she or he or it received hit or received him or received her. I told you we don't differentiate. You draw after dash and you duplicate the last vowel of the preced of the verb in the tone that applies you duplicate you put a dash here and you duplicate the verb in the tone that applies she or he or it whatever e received it the it is not there's no designated it it is the verb that will create the it or the him or the her you draw out a dash and you duplicate the last vowel in the tone that applies it ends with do ba. so it becomes me do me ba ba do me ogba she or e or it received it ogba it's another one the dash is applied and the last vowel of the preceding verb is repeated in the tone that applies of the of the verb in fact not necessarily even preceding verb because it is after that it then becomes the preceding verb the last vowel of the verb well the preceding verb the one right before it yes um is what change what creates it j o j ewa e or she j is the verb he or she or it at beans o o j e w a but you want to say he, she had it you don't want to specify beans you just want to say it or him or her without necessarily naming what they are you put a dash here after o j she at a dash then you duplicate the last vowel and then you had whatever tone applies this has the ray tone so you know that this would be me do me re mi mi re re mi re mi o j o j she ate it o j she ate it o j she ate it you duplicate the last vowel of the verb in the tone that applies separating them with a dash o j o j she ate it you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb in the tone that applies this has the re tone so it's me re mi je re mi bu is another one bu bu o bu ayo she insulted ayo but you don't want anybody to know the person let's say you're telling somebody else and you don't want everybody to know the person you don't want to name the person that was insulted and you just want to say she or he insulted him you know or her obu is what this would become bu is the verb obu you put a dash here you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb in the tone that applies this is me so you know that this would be re mi re mi re obu obu she or he or hit insulted her or him or hit if you can insult a hit you know obu to to verbally abuse to insult to insult obu she insulted him he insulted her whatever the case may be you a dash then you duplicate the last vowel of the preceding verb in the tone that applies me re moton shade i deceived shade moton shade ton is the verb you want to say i deceived her moton shade 
I deceive, I told you when it's the do, it changes. Rather than saying moton shade, you say moton shade, but it's not for today. Ton is the verb. Moton. Huh? Moton. Moton. It's what you would say for I deceived her, or I deceived him, or I deceived it. Moton. How did I get, where did this one come from? You put a dash first, and then you, especially in writing, this is critical for writing i'm trying to cover speaking as well as writing at the same time because when you're speaking you won't put a dash <laughs> you would actually even blend them the purpose of connecting them is that rather than saying moton we don't really speak like that you say, you say moton they tend to blend into each other they are connected so they tend to blend too but in, in, with actual speak you don't say moton as if they were separate words you just say Moton. That's why they are connected with a dash. I don't think I've explained that. My bad. That's why they are connected with a dash. They blend into each other. Dash, and then you duplicate the less last vowel of the preceding verb in the term that applies. Domi, ton, domi, moton, domi, moton, ton. Rather than domi, moton. Oh, that's no. The domi compatibility theory applies. So it's domi. This becomes me. Moton. Moton. I deceived him. I deceived her. In the honorific forms, one is the honorific form. This again is still singular. He, she, or it is still singular. If the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the do tone, like I mentioned earlier, it's won. If it's re, it's won. If it's me, it's won re. Won da won. And I have provided examples here in which I've tried to use uh, verbs that have each of the, that have either do or re or me, so that I can make that clear. Won honorific. This one is she or he in the honorific form. Dawon is to betray him or her in the honorific form. It's just one person, but perhaps due to some hierarchy position that they're in or is your it's involving your in-laws or something, you know, you want to use honorifics. The honorific pronouns are the plural pronouns as well, but you'll see that soon. I mentioned that earlier. One da one da is the verb, so I'm choosing to use. I'm not choosing, it's what it is. It's one here, one do me, do me. So one, one da one, she betrayed him. She betrayed, bearing in mind that these are honorific versions of each. One da one, okpa one. She or he killed him or her. Opawon. 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 Pa is the verb, which is to kill or to murder. One is him or her in the honorific form. Remi. Domi. Remi. Mi. Re. Helps you determine whether it's going to be. See? Mi. 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 Re. Re. Helps you determine which would apply. Dawon do me, pawon remi, o pawon, she killed him or her. I was hoping that you would notice the difference here. This is the honorific one. This is the honorific she or e as the subject. This is the non honorific she or e as the subject. O pawon remi, 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 o pawon. Ori won, ori won, you saw him or her. Ori, you saw. Won. Me is what the preceding verb is ending with. So it becomes re. Ori won. Ori won. You saw him. You saw her. Honorific object. You saw him or her. Me re. Won bawo. Honorific in the subject form. She, he or it. Well, can't be it, right? Because you can't use a honorific form. But she or he. I don't know why this is there, but just ignore it. She or he, since, again, it's involving a person. She, 
in this case a hit cannot receive money and you won't honorifics don't apply to it to things <laughs> she or he received money but if you want to say something like she or he betrayed him she betrayed him or he betrayed her or he betrayed him or she betrayed her whatever one down one do me one down one down one do me do me do me down one one jail wo she or he owes money this can also be he or she won money i have a video in which i covered uh contronyms words that can be the exact opposite of themselves it's a word but it can also be the opposite of itself in yoruba yoruba contronyms i've covered it lately i've been noticing more so i'm probably going to make a part two i noted one yesterday one she or he honorific holds money but if you want to say she or he honorific killed him ba see remi she insulted ayo she honorific insulted ayo this is a non honorific oh but the focus is on the object forms anyway for these ones mire mire she or e non honorific insulted him or her honorific obumo obum maybe the person that was younger than the person if let's say we're considering age insulted somebody that was older though that is older still obumo obumo bu mi re mo obumo so i was hoping that you would um <laughs> you would attempt this activity you would attempt to say the following with what i've provided i've you know what i've mentioned what he is and uh this and this how would you say the following what i've provided are the verbs so i think that's what you'd really need bo is to reverence bo sha is to select ki is to greet or acknowledge bo is to reverence sha is to select key is to greet acknowledge and i was hoping that you would have a question when i did the group class in february last year what i did was, was ask well ask me a question now that now that i've given this example sentences that you are to work on ask me a question ask me a question first you want to know if it is a honorific he you know who what is the hierarchy what is the is it honorific or not are there any honorific um factors that apply that would cause me to use honorific for them or not so that was why i <laughs> said ask me a question but e younger man in this just take it that with these ones the older person you would have to use I'm just considering age for this example sentences. The other person you would have to use honorifics for, the younger person not. Try to practice. How would you say these? But I have something that might make the work easier in the next slide. He, the younger man, reverenced Oshun. I selected it. You, younger man, greeted her, older woman. So how to say that? I put a, should I say, cheat sheet here, <laughs> so to say, uh, something that might make it easy when you can see everything that I've covered on one page. Irreverenced Oshun, what is E? You can pause the video and try to do it on your own, <laughs> but I'm going to tr explain it so that we can move on. But you can pause it if you'd like to try on your own. You can go back to the previous slide to well i should have told you to write the write it down but it is irreverence or i selected it 
you greeted her. Her, he being the younger man, reverencing Oshun, I selected it. You being a younger man, greeted her, hold a woman. Um, he reverenced Oshun. What is he? You come here. He, you can pause the video. He, in the so I didn't really address any emphatics, so don't worry about these. Oh, is what it would be. He, she, it. It doesn't matter. Oh, oh. And I said the verb for reverence is bo. So you say oh bo, oshun, bo sha ki. So oh bo, oshun. I selected it. I selected it. You know that I is mo. Selected sha is to select. I or she or it. The it, the non honorific. Of course, you can't address it and it honorifically. Is verb vowel based. I mo sha select. Selected, that's my it is verb, verb. So, what would I do? Sha, this is the verb. I would draw a dash. What do I do next after drawing the dash? What am I supposed to be duplicating to make sense of it? To create the it or the him or the her. I selected him, I selected her, I selected it. Doesn't matter. After drawing out the dash, what am I duplicating? The vowel. I'm duplicating the vowel. And then what am I doing next? After what would I be doing to the vowel afterwards? Ensuring that it has the right tone. Me do me do me because it is sha. Start drawing out this and duplicating the vowel. It has to carry the me tone because of the do me re me me re and emojiri re theory. So you would say mo sha the way that I wrote it earlier. Mo sha. Draw out the dash. Me sha. The last one, you, younger man, greeted her, older woman. What? How do we go about it? You, younger man. So I've said age is what I'm using as the honorific determiner. You, so I know that non-honorific is what I would say, use. O, you, greeted or acknowledged key older woman i'm using age as the honorific determiner so i would use honorific since they're older older woman you greeted her older woman so it would either be one or one it would either be one or one this has the me tone bearing this in mind which of these do you think i would be choosing since this has the me tone you younger man got that down greeted key then which of these would i be using since this has the me tone since key has the me tone do me re me me re this has the me tone so i would be using the one that has the re tone more O, key, which of these? This ends with me. So I will choose, since this ends with me, I will choose the one that has the ray tone. Ray, O, key, one. These are the answers. And how did you do? I'd like to know. O, bo, o, shun, younger man, using age as your honorific determiner, mo, sha, I selected it. O Kimo, you greeted her. You greeted him. <laughs> I have more. I have about like 20 opportunities for practice for you at the end of this video. So I hope that uh, with those example sentences, you would have enough to practice with. Next, we have plural personal pronouns. We, you, they, and of course, I'm going to be considering them in the subject and object forms. 
one thing to note or one thing to be reminded of is honorific pronouns are in fact plural pronouns or plural pronouns are also honorific pronouns i think that's a better way to to put it plural pronouns are honorific pronouns the reason why we would, we would address one person honorifically is because we are considering them and the higher self. We're honoring them and the higher self. We're talking to them as if, or we're talking about them as if we're addressing them and the higher self. So that's the idea behind oh okay honorific pronouns for it could be you could be considering age you could be considering social position oh they're king their chief their president their whatever it is that you want to consider you may be considering religious position you know although they are younger than me they have this position you're talking to them or talking about them as if you're referring to them and their higher self that's the purpose of honorific pronouns that's the point of honorific pronouns them their higher self them their higher self you're talk so you're you're talking to them as if you're talking to two people that's why you're using plural pronouns for them if there's anything to take away it is that <laughs> as a as a side lesson for why we use honorific pronouns them and their higher self you're honoring their higher self and treating it like it's a separate entity which of course it is apart from like their earthly self so you're paying homage to their higher self as well that's why you would be addressing one person like there are two people it could not be based on age or oh, this person is older than me or this person is uh, has a better you know whatever than me or this person is has been strategically placed in this position to guide me whether or not they're actually performing the role well or something or this person is a chief or they are my in-law or something honorific means plural you're addressing them like they're them like you're seeing them at the, and their higher self at the same time our is the first and that is we let's start with we we is awa awa the strong version the strong form of we is awa that's the strong form for we awa so you can use it in and outside the sentence if somebody asks you and your friend are approaching a place and somebody says i want one yet <laughs> who, is the, who are those you say awa that's a sufficient answer it's strong because it works even outside a sentence it can work independently and it also has an emphatic quality to it but if you want to form a sentence using the delicate um, versions this is what you do in the subject form it's we is a in the subject form we is a however in the object form if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the do tone this would be me wa wa me if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the re tone me me wa me however if the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the me tone it, be, it would be re do me re me me re do me re me me re last vowel of the preceding verb is in do, the do tone me last vowel of the preceding verb is in the re tone me last vowel of the preceding verb is in the me tone re do me re me me re example sentences afun ye ye we gave mother a is we afun ye ye Afun ye ye, afun ye ye, we gave mother, a there is we gave mother. However, if you're on the receiving end of that and you want to say mother gave us, object form us, ye ye fun wa is what you would say. Why are you saying wa here? Why is it not me, wa? 
because of the do mi re mi mi re uh, theory the uh animo jiri re theory mi re fun wa fun wa ye ye fun wa it wouldn't be mi it wouldn't be fun wa mi no be fun wa mi re mi re other examples that have like different tones apart from mi ekiwa ekiwa ki is to chant the praises of to praise ekiwa this is the this is uh a plural or honorific remember now that i've told you what the honorific thing is really about and that it is in fact plural plural pronouns maybe it was not the well i i believe that was the best way to present it to treat the singulars as as singulars emphasizing on the honorifics and the plurals as plurals you know so it's both honorific and plural so you, you could be using this as a you for one person if they fit the honorific criteria and i have recommended that video many a time in the course of this video whether it's age or social status or it could be one person or it could be two or more people irrespective of their ages or social statuses or social hierarchies or whatever you're considering it'd be two or more people irrespective of who they are you know they're just two or more they are plural anyway so you know they are more than one person anyway Ekiwa, you praised us. Keys to praise wa. This is me because of the do animojiri re theory. Do me, do me. Kiwa, do me. Ekiwa, re do me. E, e, you, kiwa. Kiwa, do me, do me. Ekiwa. In this example, you see, oshewa, she is to negatively affect. She is. At the basic level do but it's extensive use particularly the way that we use it culturally speaking we don't want to say something negative so it's she is what we use you know as an extensive way of saying negatively affect you negatively affected us Oshewa, remi she the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the rate tone so this would be mi, re mi, o she wa, o she wa, re mi, re mi, re mi. So it would always be be dependent on the do mi, re mi, mi, re, ani mo jiri re theory. Do mi, ki wa, she wa, re mi. You know. The next one is you in the plural form that is you would be addressing two people you would be addressing two people or more plural any is the strong form it may look familiar now that i've explained that honorific pronouns are in fact just plural pronouns and we use them because the rationale behind that is you're thinking of that person and the eye yourself this person and they are yourself you're addressing them both so you're looking at them like they are two people like you're seeing two people at the same time or you're if it's in the case of she or he if it fits the honorific criteria you're referring to to them like they are two people in one that's what honorific is about now that i've mentioned that you may remember this because i've addressed them in the uh, honorific singular for the honorific singular you have addressed them any is the strong version any any however in the delicate version that is they can't work independently outside the sentence um, and all that they have the subject and object forms a e is the subject a e is the subject ni you may remember this if the preceding verb ends with a me tone the verb changes you may remember this slide too from when i covered it because this is already in the me position 
you know, because this is already in the me position, me, me, the pre last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the do tone. This is already in me, so it's fine. If the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the re tone, it's already me, so it's fine. But if it ends with the me tone, you don't want to go me, me, funyi. You don't want to say that. You want to, um, of course, make it mirror somehow. You extend that last uh, vowel of that verb in the in the re tone. Let's look at these. Ewami, ewami. It could be the you here. Could be the plural you. That is, you're addressing two people or more irrespective of their ages social positions whatever however if it's just one person that you're addressing it must be that they fit the honorific criteria you might be considering their age you might be considering their if they're older than you if they are much younger than you you might be considering the fact that they are a king you can't say especially if you are from a part of yoruba land where they believe in honorifics you can't say O. Oh. You say E. Eh. They are one person. They are younger than you, but they are king. So now you have to address them honorifically. In the regions where they believe in honorifics, it's somewhat even rude. I think we've just gotten used to it. Well, I have the option of not addressing them and their higher self at the same time. But you have to consider for thousands of years, people have been doing it in those, within those, um, among those people. So <laughs> it, it's insulting to them if you don't address the, if you're considering age, let's say, if you don't address another person honorifically, or if you don't, even if a king is younger than you, if you don't address the king honorifically, it's insulting. They they get mad sometimes <laughs> because Knowing Yoruba and how we play with words, it could even be a way of insulting them too, especially within those regions. Like, I'm only considering you. I could not care less about your higher self because your higher self is not, is not really helping you in this. I'm just going to leave them out. You're not acting like somebody that is being, that has a, a higher self, a, a higher self that should behave better. You're just acting like a silly person. <laughs> so you remove that I yourself and you just address them as themselves so in those cases it can be rude but if you want to it could be one person honorific considered or two or more people Ewami Mobini I asked you Mobini I asked you Remi do me Remi Mire Remi I asked you I asked you however this one why is it changing because it has the the preceding verb has the me tone, so I won't want to say o y ha ni y o y ni is to so we are saying that the person like somebody has given up or they are no longer functioning, what? But that's not the same as this, of course. That's a different word. Y ni to the the way that you know if an animal is no more or a person you know, their teeth will sort of clench together like you know i don't even know how to explain it but that's a separate word forget about it <laughs> oh why is what you would say instead this the preceding verbs verb ends with the me tone so you put out a dash you duplicate the last vowel in the tone that applies which would be re because this is me re Mary, so owa, and then you can then say the plural you in the object form. Ni, owa, mire. Not me. You've added the race somehow, and then you can then say ni, owa ni, owa ni, owa ni. So I'm sure you remember. If you need more example sentences, you can go to the honorific form form because honorifics are plurals honorifics are plurals the reason we use honorific is we are addressing one person like two people like plurals because we're considering them and their higher self 
owa mire and then you can then say the ni owa ni ewa mi mobi ni owa ni the last one <laughs> which i'm i'm sure some people will be really happy about is awon awon and you may remember this also from ishi in the honorific form ishi in the honorific form awon is the strong form in the subject form delicate one is they one is how you start the sentence they however if the last vowel of the preceding verb is in the do tone me one if the last vowel of the preceding verb is in the re tone one if the last vowel of the preceding verb is in the me tone one for them for the object from them the object form of they them the receiving end last vowel is in do me last vowel is in re me last vowel is in me re do me re me me re one is the subject these are the object depending on the last vowel of the preceding verb one be me they birth me they birth me well this is they as in two or more people plural it could also be he or she as in one person because of the honorific factor you are addressing the he or the she like they are them and they are yourself so they you're looking at them like they are two people in one you're paying homage to their yourself so one for even one person honorifically speaking it works however if you is really two or more people at, at that point it doesn't even matter who they are or they, you're addressing them like plurals anyway they birth me let's say you're talking about your parents they birth me won't be me won't be me won't be me they birth me however in the object form won't be one is what you would say won't be one she i put she here because honorific honorific a uh, factor she's a she but this is your mother and you're addressing her like she's herself and i yourself you're paying homage to her yourself you're considering age as a factor here one also works she one be one one why is this one why doesn't this have the me tone on it it's one because the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with a me tone one be one mire 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 one be one one be one one be one she birth them one be one mire other example sentences are here that you can consider ton is to deceive i your ton one why does this have the me tone why is it one what why is this one me you know leaving the domi compatibility theory is just one why is it that because domi the last vowel of the preceding verb ends with the do tone so of course you know that you're going to be selecting the one with the me tone i your tongue one i your tongue one i your deceive them i be one i be one i be one i be one we asked them I be one we asked them why does this have the me tone why am i selecting the one with the me tone i be one because the last vowel of the preceding verb ends in the re tone re me re me be one re me i be one we asked them re me this one however the last vowel of the preceding verb has the me tone o e or she non honorific singular e or she o bu won he insulted them o bu won bu is to insult verbally insult verbally abuse bu won i'm using this one not the ones that have the me tone because me is the last vowel of the preceding verb the next has to be re Mire, mire, buwon, 
do mi ton won bi won re mi bu won mi re ton won ayo ton won deceive ayo deceive them do mi do mi bi won re mi bu won mi re do mi ton won bi won re mi bu won mi re do mi re mi mi re ton won bi won bu won do mi re mi mi re ton won bi won bu won ayo ton won i'm having too much fun with this ayo deceive them i be won we ask them o bu won he or she insulted them do mi re mi mi re that's the end of of it but i have something for you in the next uh, slides this is the say the worksheet so to say everything that we've considered is here you're either choosing for more subject more for me you're either choosing this or this depending on the last vowel of the preceding verb for all you're either for you in the for i for me <laughs> this or this depending on the last vowel of the preceding verb for you this or this depending on the last vowel we know the ni issue verb vowel based either this or this depending on the last vowel of the preceding verb and you can see that the plurals are the same as the honorifics the plurals are the same as the honorific singulars honorific is basically just plural the reason why i did it like that instead of just putting um <laughs> and i apologize if you feel that there's a better way to teach it than what i did because i keep changing my teaching method those who took my class my group class in february last year can relay that this is not really the way that i taught it at all um the the video videos that i made in 2015 are nothing like this I'm always trying to find the best way to teach it. So I thought that would be the best way to present it, instead of just saying oh plural or one person that is honorific. But if you feel that there's a better way that it is to be presented that will make it, you know, easily graspable, uh, please let me know. I'm quite open. My methods keep changing, you know. Tomorrow I can think of a better way and I'll present it. The previous videos that I've made, I didn't take down. So they are still there, but this is just like a better way to present it. But you may notice some of the things that I've mentioned, you know, you'll notice that this is like the plural is the honorific, the plural they is the honorific, you know. But if I say they, you know, I just want it to be clear that there's a difference between one person honorific and they as in two or more people so i hope you understand my rational <laughs> but this is it um energy draining to put together but very very worth it i would say um yeah but that's just my way of teaching it if you see some other methods or if you've learned this in the past and you've been taught some other methods if they seem like they work and you still get the the same answers when you then it works you know this is just my own method of presenting it and this is this is it now using this i have uh some things for you to practice i have 20 sentences for you to um give me the yoruba forms of so i guess you have something to do this weekend don't you these are the verbs ni to have more is to know ko is to teach or learn bo is to peel re is to see mo is to catch or take ko is to pack pa is to turn off j is to eat or win so is to tie so i have created example sentences with these verbs again i told you there's no past form present participle pre the verbs don't necessarily change for the tenses they don't change for tenses so what so oh, this is had what is had how would i have had no it's still the same me you know 
but I'd like you to give me the Yoruba sentences of these. She had it, she being honorific. We thought them, they peeled it, I turned it off. He being a non honorific, that is, they're younger than you and there are no other honorific factors that apply, cut us. You, honorific, saw them. You, non-honorific, know her. I taught you. The you being non-honorific. She, tied it. She being, you know, just somebody that is younger than you. No other factor considered. It caught me. It caught me. If you're able to say these, you might win something. You might win something. I also have another one for you. If you're able to do both, you might even win something more. <laughs> uh, B is to vomit B is to ask B is to bath B is to call I intentionally did it like this so that you can see that tones really are important with slight changes in tones and we have only three possibilities anyway do, re, or me you, you can have different words B, vomit B, ask B, bath so you can see B is to call so is to say C is to push Bo is to reverence Ba is to save or collect. Ge is to cut. Be is to carry. So again, she, non honorific, said it. We asked you, non honorific, they called us. I referenced you, honorific you. E, honorific, saved me. You, non honorific, vomited it. She, honorific, knows them. I birthed her. They caught it. You, honorific, carried her. So I'd like to, I'd like to get answers. In the comment section and then I can mark you and then I can tell you if you've won something or not or what you got wrong and what the correct version is don't look at the comment section if you're going to work these <laughs> I don't know if people are going to respond that's the thing you never know what to expect but I'd really like to to see you try I feel like I've covered the basics and I feel like now we should get into sentence construction to get started. This is where we need to get started. So you have to push yourself and don't uh, postpone it. Don't say, oh, I'll do it next week. Do if you start now, it, w it would show that indeed you are serious with starting to speak the language. We use pronouns so much that once you get pronouns down, See, I just gave you verbs and I've asked you to construct sentences. Once you have the verbs, you can start constructing sentences, you know. So, yeah. A big thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members, to my Alashe Oloye and Bajumo uh, YouTube members, Eduardo, um, Lou, Nya and Ricky, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> I appreciate it. You keep me going to my patrons, to my YouTube member, to my other YouTube members, to everybody who supports me in one way or another, who sh share my videos and everything. Thank you so much. And I encourage you to, perhaps for people who want to get started on speaking, I encourage you to recommend these series because it won't just be this video. If they don't really know anything and they would like to start from scratch, they have to start from the first video. But, you know, for those who want to, who probably even know the basics and they want to get started on constructing their own sentences and everything, yeah, you can recommend this video to them. And, uh, yes, thank you for everything. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.